Hello and welcome to Taking Visual Notes as we study Esther Mahlangu and her take on the Ndebele house patterns and designs. So today we'll be trying to draw a Ndebele house and some of those traditional patterns. You'll need a pencil and some scrap paper. You might also want a marker or a ruler. Those things can help, but all you really need is pencil and paper. We're going to be using lines and shapes today. Some of these you've seen before. And we're going to be trying to look at how these houses are in the video that we just saw. So first I'm going to take a look at a, with those round style houses. And uh, they look like a rectangle with a curvy bottom. And the top is a cone shape, so it looks kind of like a triangle. And she said the roof was made of thatch, which is a kind of grass that you, uh, you pull it together. So I'm using uh, diagonal and straight lines to make that. Next I'm going to use an upside down U for that uh, rounded door and some squares or rectangles for windows. Now there was another type of house that was more box shaped, more rectangular, and I noticed that it had a border along the bottom and it had a rectangle door so put a little rectangle there. And it had a um, kind of flattened top roof with another little roof on top of it. So I'm going to draw a second roof right here. And it had a flat top. Let's see. So I'm going to use some diagonal lines in the middle, a straight line, and then diagonal on the other side. I think it's easier if I put my straight line in the middle first. Then I echo my diagonal lines to meet that straight line. And I noticed some of the houses had these cool windows with stairs lines. It looked kind of like stairs. There we go. Next, I want to take a look at some of those rectangle patterns that we saw. So I'm going to draw four kind of uh, skinny vertical rectangles. And then inside the rectangles, there were different patterns. So I'll start with a zigzag pattern. This is a regular zigzag. It goes from side to side. And I'm going to add some echo lines to give it a little bit more flair. I saw that several times on those houses. Next, I'm going to try some chevrons on the top and the bottom of this one. I saw that a lot. And sometimes she would put a, a shape in the middle of that too. But that's up to you. Next I have this kind of ladder design. I think of this as small rectangles inside the big one. So I'm going to try that again. And uh, those could be kind of like the uh, steps or rungs on a ladder. And in between I'm going to have some downward pointing triangles, or you could say a letter V, a chevron, right? There we go. Next, let's look at some of those big rectangle patterns. I saw a couple ways that this would turn out, so I've got a good sized rectangle here, and I'm going to split it in half two times with a vertical and horizontal line, and then I'm going to use some diagonal lines to make triangles here, corner to corner. I got triangles. I could color that in like that, or if I wanted to do another thing, I could come back and make this rhombus shape in the middle. Or I could turn it into four triangles per box. That's kind of cool too. All right, let's look at another pattern I saw. And this was a very common one. We've got that kind of window pattern there. But now I'm going to go with diagonal lines from corner to corner. And I noticed that they would color it in a specific way. They would color in a triangle and skip a triangle. Color in a triangle and skip a triangle. Color and skip and color. All right. 
And last, I want to do a compound shape. So I'm going to put a bunch of shapes on top of each other. First, a vertical rectangle, then a horizontal one to make a cross pa pattern, a cross shape. You could stop there, or you can add stairs in between. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to put some zigzags on the end here. All right. So I hope you got the grasp of that. Next, we're going to be trying this as one big composition. So stay tuned for the next video where we're going to make a whole picture. Bye for now.